Hey guys, so today I have an incredibly special, incredibly rare, and incredibly exciting Louis Vuitton reveal to share with you guys. Interested to see what it is? Stay tuned. Hello everyone, so if you're new to my channel, my name's Caleb, and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, travel, reveals and unboxings, and pretty much anything that has to do with life and style, I'm your guy. So today I have probably the most rare and exciting reveals in the history of this channel. All four months. I know, mind blowing, wow. Oh my gosh, okay, so let's get things out of the way first. So if you don't already follow me over on Instagram, find me, caleb.snell.designer, same name over on TikTok, and if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. We have a lot of fun on this channel. Hit the subscribe button down below and that bell icon so that way you're notified when I post new content every Wednesday and Sunday at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am living in Chicago. They're technically being posted in Indiana time, so I'm very confused. But if you hit the bell icon, you won't be confused. You'll know when I post. Okay, so let's dive into it. If you've been collecting Louis Vuitton as long as I have, I think I started collecting back in 07, 08, you should be very familiar with this collection. Now, this collection only was in production for three years. In Louis Vuitton time frame, that's not very long for a, for a collection to be in production. This is from the Etoile collection, or Star collection. So this debuted in 2008. Originally they only had, I think the bowling bag, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe the shopping bag. And then as time wore on in 09, they introduced this bag, which we'll get into here in a minute. The sac Paul, which came in a GM and a PM size, a Paul for shoulder. I love what they did there. The bowling bag is honestly phenomenal. If, if I could pull that off, I would buy that in a heartbeat. It's the perfect mix of Vachetta, quilted monogram, retro design. Mm. Chef's kiss, it's perfection. Sadly, I can't pull that off. Uh, they also had tons of small leather goods, by tons I mean a compact wallet, a Sarah wallet, and an agenda if I remember right, so literally maybe three or four. The bag that I purchased, from what I can understand from my research, was only in production for one year in 2009. Now, this collection had some heavy hitters. There was the Exotics, the Exotics Sack Shopper, which I think retailed by the time it was discontinued for 7,500, no, that's the PM size, 7,850 USD. In 2011, I would have preferred probably just buying a Birkin, but it's a gorgeous bag, but resale I don't think has been very kind to this collection. Now this one I almost paid full retail. Well, not really, we'll get into that here in a minute. So back then, um, I was still in my just starting phase, so I was like, oh, you know, monogram speedy, maybe I want a monogram never full. So the higher end collections weren't really on my radar. I think I had my eye on one of the wallets, if I remember. I mean, gosh, 2009 was 13 years ago? Hmm. <laughs> 12 years ago. Ah, barely passed math in college, can you tell? All right, so this bag, oh my gosh, okay. So let me rewind. So if you haven't been around for a minute, uh, a few weeks ago I revealed my collaboration with Rebag. Essentially they posted photos of my bag collection on their website, The Vault, and I was the July feature. Yeah, July. I tell you what, so in moving to Chicago, my whole time frame for everything is totally messed up, so forgive me, but it was my, it was the, I was the July feature on their website, which is a huge deal. I was on their Instagram, their email send outs, and I did receive a credit for being involved in that, so that's why I ordered this bag. And then it was just kind of a perfect storm, so I was originally saving that credit to either purchase the Limelight and I wanted Rose Gold, which they didn't have. And if you look at Rebag's history, I think they've only ever had like maybe two or three Limelights in that color, so I knew it wasn't happening. And there is a Prada Ombre Lace clutch that I really want. So both were worn by Sarah Jessica Parker in the first film. The Limelight clutch is when Charlotte had her baby, and then I think the Prada clutch was when she was on the payphone? Yeah, it was the payphone scene. Anyway, needless to say, they didn't have either. They literally had one of the Prada bags in their full history of sales, and like I said, two or three rose gold Limelights. I knew it wasn't probably gonna happen, at least not yet. Sorry, Zane, I have a shopping problem. You already know this, 15 years almost. So I wanted to purchase something special to mark my first collaboration with a major company. 
And I think this is it. So this bag, like I said, okay, you know what? I've bored you enough. Let's dive into this box. If I pretended that like, wow, oh my gosh, this is the first time I'm seeing it, I'd be lying to you guys. A, I'm not a good actor, and B, the minute this was delivered today, I was in my office, sliced the box open, pulled it out, immediately fell in love. But I packaged it for the YouTube theatrics. So I may not be a good actor, but I can at least pack a box. That's all I'm saying. So as always, this is from Rebag, of course, but as always, they did a wonderful job packaging. They're not quite like Fashion File, where they go all out with like the confetti and the nail file and the this and then that and the mailing, um, like the little card stocks and things and calendars, which I can appreciate from a, a, a cost standpoint. Those things aren't free for retailers to include in the box. B, wasteful. Like I said in my previous videos, I do share the confetti from the fashion file boxes. I put them in gift bags for like kids. You know, they pull them out I'm like, whoa, cool confetti. So I can appreciate the fact that they don't have all the extra stuff in there from a cost standpoint, environmental standpoint, and it just gets in the way. So let's get to the, let's get to the main event. Just a bit of black tissue, really no branding. All that aside, I do appreciate when Rebag and Yugi's Closet places your purchase in one of these sealed plastic bags. So not everyone has access to like a package room or an apartment building. A lot of times these are gonna be sitting out on your front porch. They could be, you know, in the rain, in a snow drift in the winter time. So this kind of helps protect the bag. Just make sure that you recycle this with like your shopping bags at like Target or whatever. But let's dive in. So as I was saying, this collection was only in production for three short years. And from what I can tell in my research, my bag was only in production for 2009. So there's not that many examples online for sale. Maybe one on like Poshmark or The Real Real somewhere. So not that many to pick from example wise. So this bag is from 2009, the Etoile collection. You guys, are you ready for this? <sighs> For those of you who know me, you know my style, so obviously you know which bag it is. For those of you who don't, throw down in the comments what you think it might be, and let's take a look. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Ugh. Okay, so this bag is phenomenal. So the Etoile collection features puffed quilted monogram, which I think is so unique. The stitching is straight, it's on point. One thing I don't love from that era of Louis Vuitton is the massive brass buckle. These are prone to scratch. And with Louis Vuitton, the brass is prone to silvering. Eventually you rub through that first layer of brass and it's just gonna be kind of a silver underneath. So I have to be very careful with this piece. Um, this is also that, similar to like the Galliera, the big buckle on the Stresa. Th they were really experimenting with hardware and not in the best way. I said what I said, don't, don't crucify me in the comments. But oh my gosh, you guys, this bag is stunning. I love it for its retro design with the, quilt, uh, the quilted monogram, the piping of the Vachetta, these little corner pieces. The buckle is amazing. It's a turn lock. Of course, I have the rebag tag still on there, so I can't really flip it for you to show its mechanism. But for those of you who've been on my channel for a while, you know that after I reveal a bag, typically within the next week or two, I also do an in-depth review. So keep an eye out for that to come. Now in the photographs online, I thought maybe this was like a slip pocket on the back. It's not, it's just kind of echoing the front detail. The front's not a pocket either, which is unfortunate. With the Etoile collection, this mechanism here is hinged. Let me get this off of there. So as you can tell, it's a hinged mechanism, which is kind of unique. And it opens up to a gorgeous Alcantara lining. Uh, what is it called? Wheatonite? No, that's the coated canvas lining. You know what? I forget what they call this lining. So for those of you who know, let me know down in the comments. This came with the original dust bag, which is great for storing, especially with something that has so much fichetta. I'm not necessarily going to keep this out in my bag case. So I definitely keep this covered so that way it doesn't prematurely darken. In the interior, I've got some packing air paper. It's just a very simple interior. So you have the Louis Vuitton made in France, of course. Louis Vuitton Paris made in France. There is a zipper pocket back in the back. This has the same zipper pull as what they were using on like the zippy and things like that during that era, which is unique. I did test this with my Apple iPhone Pro Max 11. Fit just fine. Could you do a full size wallet in here? No, unfortunately. So I am gonna be using a smaller card case in here. Uh, would I be able to get keys in and out? Probably not, so maybe not carried on days where I'm driving. But you guys, it's such a supple and luxurious feel to this bag. I, I love its construction, the design, it's impeccable. Now, I need your advice. We already know this bag is rare. It was only made for one year. And the one I got is in pretty decent condition. There are some marks on the Vachetta. These things happen. The bag is 12 years old. Okay, yeah, see, not good at math. 12 years old, so it's gonna show somewhere. 
You know me, I love a flap clutch. That's my jam, that's my style. So I always know that there's going to be a stress point here where it connects to the bag. Unfortunately, in this case, there's a small tear in the canvas. It wasn't mentioned in the ad, but there is a small tear in the canvas. Could I put a little glue on it? Absolutely, and it'd probably be fine. I, I don't think I'll ever, you know, stress it too much and open it all the way up to its full potential. So I'm not too worried about that. <sighs> I hate to ask this. Do I keep the bag or do I send it back? Personally, I want to keep it. I'd be devastated not to have it, but I've never had torn monogram canvas before. So I don't know if I should expect it to just get worse, if it'll be fine. I have no idea. This is such a rare bag. Only made it for one year, so I'm not in a hurry to return it. But you know, once you cut these tags, the bag is yours. And I really wanna cut these tags. Let me know down in the comments what you guys would do, and we'll go from there. So, numbers, let's talk about cost. So in 2009, this little clutch retailed for 1,530 USD, 12 years ago. I would hate to see what Louis Vuitton would charge for it today, especially with the new price increase. I'm glad I bought my daily pouch when I did. Link down below for that reveal. <laughs> 1,530 USD in 2009. Insanity. This bag, given that it's so rare, I was able to find it on Rebag for 1,180. I had a credit. I don't really want to disclose how much. I had a credit for my the work I did for them and collaboration, plus $125 appreciation credit and 10% off. Just to throw a number out there, I barely paid more than a third of its original price. Not bad for a rare Louis Vuitton. Uh, you guys, what do I do about this cracked canvas? I need some input. I love the bag. Of course, this is my style. Am I gonna carry this every day? Absolutely not. This is gonna be like a special shopping trip to dinner, date night, who knows? Maybe not even date night. I think monogram isn't. Well, I mean, it's quilted, so you could dress that up. I don't know, I don't know. All things aside, do I keep it? Do I send it back? Please tell me to keep it because I'll be devastated if I send it back. But you guys, this was my treat to myself. Like I said, I've been through a whole lot with my promotion lately. The move to Chicago, my first major collaboration with a major brand. This is also the 25th handbag in my collection. It needed to be something special. And what's more special than a rare, limited run Louis Vuitton bag? Did I hit this one out of the park? I, I think I did. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much again for watching. Thank you for all your comments, your likes, your subscribing. Follow me on Instagram. It's been awesome talking to each and every one of you down in the comments and getting to know everyone. I, I just love it here. So thank you guys for all your support and say hello to my newest bag. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for supporting my shopping addiction. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> But as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. I think Wednesday's video is going to be a, an in-depth review of my Louis Vuitton daily pouch. And then this review will probably go up Sunday or maybe the following Wednesday. I'm not sure. Who knows? We're in this together, so hit subscribe and find out. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.